Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. This is Jesse LaFleche. Catherine Reese. And I'm Sean Rice, and uh, we are the Consolidated Coders here with our final presentation for the ASUM Information and Referral Project. And we're just going to go ahead and jump right into that. First of all, a little bit about what is the AIR project. Uh, for those of you that need a little bit of a refresher, it's an effort to consolidate information for those in need of help, uh, give references for food, housing, other services that you might need. We wound up going with the Airtable database for this, which uh, we don't highly recommend, but that's what we started with. Server was Heroku, and for the front end, we went with React and Bootstrap. And a little bit first, from user testing feedback that we got, some of the suggested fixes that uh, you'll, you'll notice when we go to the website for real. Confusion about the quiz setup, some taxonomy selection bugs that we'll describe when we're on that page. Uh, the download menu covers the exit button on Windows from time to time if the user doesn't close out of it. Uh, there was some location field bug that we'll show you. The quiz placement, some people liked, some people did not like the cluttered edit organization page and uh, the highlights of the search bar to make it pop out more to the eye. But, whoops, my computer's sliding. We also got a lot of positive feedback as well for what we have to present today, including the categorical buttons were very intuitive. People were in a huge hurry to get to use those. The print and save buttons were also very intuitive. The exit now button was generally useful. The quiz functions as expected, which doesn't sound like a lot, but we were, it was tough to get it to that point. And we had a lot of people at the end of the test were saying things like, this is very straightforward, not at all confusing, very streamlined, very easy to use. And uh, that's what we will be showing you. First of all, where we came from and then where we, where we wound up and then we'll show you the site for real. All right, so you can see here that there is the um, original draft of our homepage and uh, what it ends up looking like. Uh, you can see we kept the buttons and, and uh, the hotline bar and the exit now button. Okay, and this is uh, the login page. It looks very similar to what uh, we originally wanted and then it how it turned out. Really not much to talk more on that. This is the post login page. So if you notice up in the top right, you have an additional, additional buttons. Uh, that only happens once you're logged in. And then we get into our edit organization button. This is what Jordan Lyons would see when he uh, goes to edit organization. Uh, a few things that we added was a search bar for a couple of things, and we have a little bullets and post thing here instead of the uh, pending add delete comments. Some changes had to be made, but it actually still looks very similar to what we originally planned. Go ahead, Sean. Uh, <clears throat> this page uh, is is very, is as similar as we can make it. At the time of drawing the original, we had no idea just how many fields, how many options there were going to be for an organization to be able to edit its page. But for the most part, we tried to keep it as true to the source source material as possible. Um, and as you can see, uh, we did change the location of the survey button. It is now uh, blue and to the side of the page, and it follows you as you go. And this is the survey page. Uh, from the left was our original draft and the right, and it's pretty, pretty much the same. Uh, second part of the survey. This page got changed around just a little bit because of, uh, in part, confusion about what clicking show more would do and there's also the the view more button that would come after you click show more and so this we changed just a little bit to make it more obvious that by clicking these buttons we're not taking you away from our own website we're taking you just to a page that has more information about uh, the, the organization you're looking at uh, this for the most part looks just about like you'd expect from the drawing, pretty simple and straightforward. It just directly gives you the information you're looking for, no nonsense about it. 
Um, and these are some of the transi transitions that we suggested. Um, for one, Airtable is not secure and it has its own API, which isn't uh, fully functional. So we would recommend that a team rip out Airtable altogether. And um, also paying for Heroku or some other uh, server would be a better option. Uh, the free Heroku is kind of slow. And um, we would also recommend uh, improving the CSS. All right, and now we'll go right into kind of demoing our site. Uh, here we go. So this is the home page. Um, Kat, go ahead and talk a little bit and tell me where you want me to go if you want me to go anywhere. Uh, so to start with, um, you see the hotline bar on the right and you can close and open it. Um, there's also the exit now button that we left in. You can now hide it and show it. Um, and I guess we'll go to categorical button. So click on the food. Uh, so when you click on food, it'll go to the next part and it'll display the children of food. Um, and you can click on food pantry and you can see um, food pantry doesn't have any children. So it brings up a list of organizations. Uh, you can click to show more information on each of those organizations. And um, the URL is there so you can go directly to the site or uh, click to view more information on that website. <clears throat> and uh, once you once you click to go to the full page, you'll just get this uh, nice little dynamically populated uh, page with all of its information. Like I said, it's pretty straightforward, no nonsense at the time because I'm not much of a graphic designer myself. But uh, if if the organization were to add multiple phone numbers or do anything like that, then these would all be represented here as well as in the database. Uh, the same goes for services, additional taxonomies, take your pick, whatever they, whatever they do once they're logged in, they will, uh, it, will be, it will be displayed here for the user. And as you can see, Jesse playing with the print and download is PDF buttons, which uh, will function to, if the user wants to print it to have it to walk around with or download as PDF and they're not familiar with you just right clicking and print a PDF, then those buttons are there to just help them along. And of course, as Jesse will show you, you just click the uh, logo like most websites and it'll take you right on back to the home page. And while we're here, I would like to note that this is all these and their children and all the results are dynamically populated. So if Jordan, or a future client would like to go in and change in the database what kinds of results there could be, like add a new one of these buttons or add a new subcategory. It could be done very easily with just an extra line in the Airtable database that's very easy to interact with. And then the next we'll show is, uh, <clears throat> we'll show the uh, survey real quick. Uh, so the survey is very similar to the original um, drawing. Um, you can see somebody can read through these. If anything applies to them, they can hit a checkbox. Um, so right now we selected, are you a college student? And you find that you cannot afford to pay for food due to tuition costs. So that question has children questions. And when you click continue, it'll bring it up, bring up the next uh, any connected questions. So um, you can see the results. All right, and those are all the results. And it's very similar to the uh, categorical button uh, results page. Um, there's multiple organizations. The only difference is that there are uh, numerous uh, taxonomies or categories uh, now displayed. Okay, and now real quick, we'll go into the organization login. Uh, this is the same as any other login screen, so we're just gonna add in our credentials. You'll notice we have a few more buttons here on top. Uh, we'll go ahead and go, we call it view organizations now. So this is where Jordan can uh, see all of the organizations that he has under him, and he can choose to list them or unlist them 
as he sees fit. And now we have this bulletin thing. <clears throat> we'll go into that a little bit later. And this pending comments area was always just a placeholder and it never actually got implemented. So we implemented a search bar. You can put anything you want in there and it will show up. You could even put their emails if you wanted and that will show them more specifically. So you can put anything in there and it dynamically changes it. Uh, you can create new organization from here. Sean, go ahead. So the create new organization page is a, a bit of a simplified version of the edit organization page, which we'll show you later. But essentially, uh, there are, as you can see, highlighted with red, some required fields of just the very bare bones information that are required by Jordan or somebody else to create a new organization for the project. And once the organization is created, anything that's left blank will just automatically be populated with not listed. And then uh, the idea is that so that for organizations with a lot of information, Jordan doesn't have to do all the work. He can simply assign them an account and they can go into the edit organization page and they can fill in the rest of their information. So what you, what you didn't see in the create organization page was an option to add multiple phone numbers or an option to add multiple addresses or anything like that because uh, either that can be done later by the organization account holder or also later by Jordan in the edit account button. So if you do come to the uh, edit right now, we're in the edit ASUM information page, you can see that if we go to like service right here, we were just at service information, you can click that button to delete service one and just completely get rid of it if you like to. Uh, or I think scroll to the bottom of that, would you Jesse? There should be a button. It gets kind of, you can select to create a new service record. And so these will, it's the same for phones, for uh, addresses, for contacts. You can create or delete as many of them as you want. And you can also dynamically link them. Uh, because of the dynamic nature of this page, it, as you can see, the CSS gets a little bit messy because I had never uh, personally worked with anything like this before. So it was a bit of a challenge, but Things like taxonomies for services can also be dynamically created. If you go up to services again, Jesse, go ahead and delete supported employment taxonomy right there towards the, the next one down. Yeah, there you go. You can just get rid of them and then go ahead and do the select an option. We can add a new taxonomy. So I said that there is a bug where Essentially, these taxonomies are not supposed to be available in the first dropdown. You're supposed to have to click one. Just go ahead and do, I don't know, food. And it should, like I said, I'm not good with dynamics, but just like the categorical buttons, it will keep narrowing it down. You select another one like food pantry. And now that food pantry has been selected, there we see that the food pantry taxonomy has been added. And uh, you should be able to scroll to the bottom and click submit. And then if everything works all right, this was another bug that came up at least one time. Uh, it should now be there permanently. We did have one use case where it didn't work and we're not quite sure why. But, and the other bug that I said we would mention is basically a user could start filling out the taxonomy and then just stop halfway through and submit the page. And a taxonomy would be added to the service that's not a, a base child. And so someone's clicking through the categorical buttons would never find that service by that taxonomy. So that is one thing that uh, still needs to be addressed. And honestly, I'll probably just do it myself, even though we're kind of at the end of the project here. Um, and I think that mostly covers, covers that. Yeah. Aspect. So another thing that I just clicked on through here is to show some local events. Um, clicking on the view local events automatically logs you out. So you can click on the events and this, this is, shows a list of like local organizations that are doing things, what time they may be uh, and such. And if you are an organization and you are logged in, you can actually add an event because only organizations can add, event, add events. There's the add event button. And then you just fill in the required data and then you can create it. Um, this is uh, also something that 
can be seen right here uh, with Jordan's look. He can see them just in a list. Not all organizations can see them like this. He can delete them as necessary because he has the ultimate power to do such things. And then uh, I think that that is everything, unless one of you guys. Oh, go ahead and sign in as a cart just to uh, show the difference between a uh, administrative user and a normal a normal organization account. So uh, yeah, so now that we signed in as a regular organization that's not an admin, when they click on, this used to be view organizations, now it's edit organization, which means it'll take them straight into their own stuff that they can edit. So that means that they can't just look through a list and see everybody else's stuff. That, uh, so it's our way of trying to secure it a little bit better so not everybody is an admin. And I think that's really the only difference between admin and uh, and not admin. Anything else we need to add, guys? Uh, click the exit now button and show them it works. All right, Google, exit now. Thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you.